Jesus satisfies. Matthew chapter 12 tonight for our continuing study on the life of Jesus Christ. Now, last Wednesday, we studied about his entrance into the city of Jerusalem with palm leaves. Dilito Psalm, sake ang atong PowerPoint. I just realized Psalm to sa iyo de ito. Sorry kayo, ha? Wala na ko ma-check. Palm to palm. Kanang palmiras ba? Palm. Naan na daan na. Kaya daghan na diri sa Pilipinas. Palms. But anyway, um, today we're going to talk about something that is also connected uh, to the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we would like to backtrack a little bit, but this will be focused more on a person, okay, at, or persons. So in Matthew chapter 12, I want us to look at verse 46 to 50 for tonight's uh, text uh, in the, for our message, and let's read together this uh, passage of Scripture. 46 to 50, Matthew chapter 12. If you're there, say amen. Okay, ready? Read. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we come to your throne of grace asking for your wisdom. And once again, we pray that the Holy Spirit guide each and every one of us tonight. I pray also as your designated messenger that you will help me, O Lord God, to teach and to preach what needs to be uh, said tonight in this uh, uh, few moments that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of just uh, worshiping together, for keeping us throughout these uh, last uh, few days since we, uh, we, we uh, met uh, and, and worshiped together last Sunday. And Lord, we do pray that you will also guide us throughout the week. There are still many things that have been planned and many things that you want us to do. I pray your strength and your wisdom and guidance. And may also this message tonight give us the inspiration, the encouragement that we all need to be able to continue to serve you faithfully until you come back to take us home. We pray that you will continue to comfort the Mukendi family and the church over there, the brethren. And I pray that you will, O oh Lord, send forth someone to be able to stand and uh, fill the gap that has been left by the ministries uh, that uh, Brother Mukendi was handling. Thank you, Lord, for our missionaries. Also empower them, even for us tonight. And we commit everything to you. If there's anyone that is not saved and born again, I pray that you will speak to them. I pray that they will uh, be free from the shackles of religion and come to a pure and true relationship with Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you will free them as your word has said, that the truth will set them free. We commit all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A parallel passage of this scripture is also found in Mark chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. Now, we will go back, go to this passage as well as we go through this message. Two points only tonight, but I would like for us to focus on the woman Mary. Now, in a few days... Uh, it will be Christmas time, or a few days, few weeks. lang October and then November, December na Pasko na na anay bonus na anay pinaskuhan no chibuina lecho na sad unsa pa na diha. But at any rate, um, Mary will be mentioned more than any time of the year. Christmas time good. And it's because when people remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot talk much about his miraculous birth without making some reference to his mother Mary. Now we have already learned that just by the name of Jesus Christ, his full name, we can all already know who he is. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord means His deity. He is God. His name Jesus talks about His humanity. Now, it doesn't mean that He began 
on Christmas Day. He began on the time nga natao siya. No, Jesus, wa pa siya ma Jesus, he was already the Word. He was already the second person of the Trinity. He, he, he was with the Father. He was with the Holy Spirit. He has no beginning and He has no end. But when the second person of the Trinity took upon Him the form of man, then gipanganlan siya og Jesus. Okay? So, Lord is his, is his deity. Jesus is His humanity. And Christ is His ministry, His appointment. And He was to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Now, since Jesus' mother played such an important role in His birth, I want us con- to consider the question that we read tonight. And I, probably some of you were already questioning this. Bitaw, no? Kung wapa mo kabasaan ni nga passage of Scripture, makabasa, nakabasa mo ka ron, nakapangutanan mo, bitaw, no? Who is my mother? In um, verse uh, 48, Who are my brethren? Also repeated in the parallel verse of Mark chapter 3. Now, this question is a question of family. Okay? Now, just a little background of the question. Before this question came up, what was happening? Jesus, in verse number 10 to 11, was healing the multitudes. And then he ordained the 12 apostles in verse number 14 to 19. And then in verses 19 to 20, he enters a house where more people come to him. And mas kinayana sa kadaghan sa mga tao, di siya makakaon, wa siya kakaon. <laughs> Naglisod siya kaon. Kay daghan kay tao. Have you ever experienced that? You know, when you were in a party and you hosted that party and then, you know, you weren't expecting so many people to come in you had to look for extra food. You had to look for things that you could be able to take care of the guests that were coming. And it took a lot of your time, a, a lot of your energy. This was uh, the case during that time. And then in verse number 21 to 30, Jesus was accused of being crazy. And he was in league nga Kabarks, kabarkada siya ni Satanas. Of course, these were the, the people who would not believe that Jesus Christ is God. And finally, after that, here we read in verse number 31, ni abot ang pamilya, earthly family ni Jesus. Now, here in our text, okay, two points from any, it reveals this lesson tonight. The question is, who is my mother? A question of family ties is the title of our message tonight. And this basically reveals that Christ has two families, much like you and me. If you are saved and born again, say amen. You have two families. Now notice here, similarly, makita nato dari number one, the earthly family of Christ. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 to 48, the Bible records uh, this, that Jesus had his mother and his brethren come to him because they, want, he, they wanted to speak to him in the midst of all the, the crowd. Morobag ka ng morning gitawag nga advantage kung anak ka or naakay connection kay bisag unsa ka busy ang person that you're connected to when you go there everything can stop because you are connected. Um, you can go just straight into His presence if you are connected, if you are a son. And, and that is what happens most of the time for families. Kung imong igago, ay, pasudlo na kayo ako ng igago. Pasudlo na kayo ako ng anak. Pasudlo na kayo ako ng asawa. Pasudlo na kayo ako ng bana. Pasudlo na kayo ako ng igsoon. And this was the case. There were a lot of people there. The crowd was there, and, and it was crowded. And then, Jesus' earthly family came. Now, the Bible records the names of four of Christ's stepbrothers in Mark chapter 6. So let's go to Mark chapter 6. And the Bible, do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Okay, look at what the Bible says. Mark chapter 6, verse number 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Because Joseph, 
by trade was a carpenter and taught his son Jesus carpentry. So silang duha, nag, nagtrabaho sa ilang carpentry shop until 30 years old. Kay mo man ay Jewish tradition. And then after that, you can do whatever you want to do sa imong kinabuhi. So, ningon diri, is not this the carpenter, talking about Jesus, the son of Mary, the brother of James, okay? And Joseph and Judah and Simon. So, upat ka igsoon. And notice here, are not his sisters here with us? So, at least, duha. At least, na say duha kababayang igsoon. Nga anak ni Mary. And they were offended at him. Now, just this verse alone refutes the Roman Catholic doctrine of the perpetual virginity of Mary. Okay? Now, the Bi- I'm talking about the Bible. If you are a Roman Catholic watching this message tonight, I'm talking about biblical truth. Okay? And so, I, I would just like to read just a few things about the, catechis- the-, the Catechism of Mary. I downloaded this. Now, there are four Marian dogmas in the Catholic Catechism. First of all, Mary as the mother of God. Now, the, the, the philosophy is, since Mary is the mother of Jesus and Jesus is God, hence, Mary is the mother of God. Now, diri mga kaigsunan ang error. Tinood nga Jesus is God. Pero Jesus is also human. 100%. That is where the delineation needs to be made. The clarity needs to be made. Because many people do not clarify that. Mura bagiratsada na lang ang tanan. And of course, uh, for many who do not know, the word Catholic means universal. Roman means the origins, where it came from. So it's a religion that originated in Rome, a pagan um, a pagan uh, empire, which was overrun with Christianity, with many Christian converts. And in 313 AD, Emperor Constantine declared Rome to embrace Christianity. But they did not really embrace Christianity the way, Christ, the way it is said. No. They actually changed the pagan religion to Christian names. So that is why in the Roman Catholic religion, you have a lot of names that you call on. In fact, it is not just uh, um, names, it, they're continuing to grow. It's, it's not just um, static, it's, it's dynamic, it's, it's moving, it's, it's growing. <laughs> Here, sa ato lang, sa atong syudad, na atay bagong uh, santo, si Kalungsod. O si, duha man ni sila, si, ha? Lorenzo Ruiz, duha. Ang original, si Santo Nino. And then, si, Ma- uh, si uh, Mary of Guadalupe. And I think a few years ago, there was a declaration here in Cebu, it was in the news, nga ang gi- official giyod nga patron sa Cebu is Mary sa Guadalupe. Mga giyod to'y gipataas giyod. So, secondary ra si Santo Nino, ni Mary. So, the first dogma is Mary is the mother of God. The second dogma is Mary ever virgin, meaning wa yud mawa iyang virginity. But then, makita nato diri just in one verse that Mary did not remain virgin after she had Jesus. Of course, she was still a virgin, but then they had sexual relations with Joseph and then they had sons and daughters. That's, that's in the Bible. I, I'm, ju- I'm just reading Mark chapter 3. And then the third dogma is the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. But it was, it was promulgated only in 1854. Now, this, the, the author said 
the writer of this, getting it from the Catechism of Catholic, uh, the Catholic Catechism, said this, but the seeds of the dogma of Immaculate Conception are found much earlier in a careful reading of Scripture. When the angel addresses Mary at the Annunciation, that the angel says, Hail, Mary full of grace. Kanat na lang daan, she says. Might as well be the title of her name because it describes Mary's true nature as divine. So meaning, Mother of God, or as we know, if you are from the Catholic, Gikan mong Katoliko, Queen of Heaven. But you know what? This Queen of Heaven is not really new. Dugay naman eh. Jeremiah chapter 44. Look at in what in the Bible, the worship of the Queen of Heaven. Dugay na ni. This has been a pagan practice in ancient time. Jeremiah chapter 44, starting from verse number 16. Jeremiah here preaching and telling them about the one true God, Jehovah God, the God of Israel. And the Bible says, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, ingon ang iyang giwalihan, we will not listen. Verse 17, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the what? Okay. So, kaning Queen of Heaven dugay na ni? The worship of the Queen of Heaven dugay na. And that is, it has been passed on from generation to generation, from civilization to civilization, and on to the Roman Empire, just changing the names. Onya karon gi Christianize ang pagan mo nang gitawag siya Mary. But the Bible has never commanded us to worship nor venerate Mary. Luke chapter 1. Now who is Mary? In Luke chapter 1, Mary is just like you and me. A sinner that has been saved miraculously by the grace of God. In Luke chapter 1, here is Mary's song. Luke chapter 1. Wapa ko sa Luke chapter 1. Ano mo dia? Hmm. Here is what Mary said in Luke chapter 1. Isa, alabanta. And verse number... Um... Luke chapter 1, verse number 46. Now, the Annunciation, nga mahimo siyang mama, mukarga siya sa, uh, yang sabakan, si Jesus. And in verse number 46, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Verse 47, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God. Kinsang Savior? Imong Savior? Kung sa ingon niya, Akong manluluwas. So si Mary was just like you and I, nga gigamit siya sa ginoo, but in a very special way. Now, people say, Pastor, are you against Mary? Of course not. Mary is a sister. And we're going to learn that tonight. Mary is a sister in Christ. He is part of our family. I would dili ko against Mary. I love Mary. In fact, she is a, one of the most privileged of our brethren kay siya gigamit pag ang pag pagsabak sa atong manluluwas. But of course, miraculous birth ni. And so we find here so kana the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Kana mga upat ka mga dogma about Mary, no? The Marian dogma. I think some of you already know about this. Just a little review of your past. So notice here the interruption of Christ's family. Ang atong first point is this. The earthly family of Christ. So under that, Makita nato the interruption of Christ's family. So naabot ang pamilya ni Kristo sa katong event, katong hitabo. 
He was teaching, and then through his teaching, many people came in. And then when his family sought to interrupt his teaching, we do not know, the Bible is silent, the exact reason why Jesus' family wanted to talk to him at that particular ta time. Maybe they were concerned what he was teaching. Maybe they were confused of the claims that he was making. Maybe they were worried that na exhausted siya or maybe over fatigue. Maybe. Or maybe they were embarrassed that he, because he was accused of being in cahoots and crazy with the devil, they were embarrassed that his behavior was leading to people being against Jesus. So those are possibilities, no? The interruption. And secondly, <clears throat> excuse me, under this point, notice Christ's response, the inquiry of Christ's response. In verse number 48, Jesus responded with a question. Pinaaman sila, nagbusisi man sila, ingon ang mga disciples, Lord, naay mong pamilya o? Sudlun na to ni, sam ni, daplin mo diha, on saman. And you know what Jesus said? Who is my mother? Imong mama na adri, imong mga ikso na adri. And Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my, who are my brethren? Now was Jesus ignoring his mother? Was Jesus showing disrespect? Of course not. It is obvious that Jesus cared about his mother and was making sure she would be taken care of because if you remember, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he looked to John and said, Behold thy mother, atimanani, ikaw na'y bahala sa akong inahan. Ikaw na'y bahala ni Mary. So wala na, Jesus had a caring heart for Mary. But notice, Jesus reacted the way that he should react in this case. So, kaning veneration ni Mary, ato ning madisregard tungod sa reaction itself ni Jesus Christ. Tanawa. When Jesus asked this question with regards to his mother Mary and his family, this was the perfect opportunity to let people know that Mary was not more important than anyone else in that house. Secondly, for example, if Jesus said, Uy, akong mama, padaplin, padaplin mo. Mama, dali mo, dali mo. Dali mo, dali mo. Ano ang reaksyon ni Jesus? If Jesus would have dropped everything and stopped teaching and stopped preaching and, and, and stopped sharing the truth, He was doing and submitting to the wishes of Mary. He would be showing Mary had more influence in his life than the ministry God called him to do. Now listen, the fact that Mary was Jesus' earthly mother did not give Mary greater access to Jesus than anyone else. Now, inom to me, Jesus is already in ministry. Dili na ni siya, above na ni sa iyang pagkatawhanon. Ministry na ni, langit no na ni. And how Jesus controlled the situation was very critical. Jesus turns the interruption of his ministry into an opportunity to teach this great spiritual lesson. And what is that lesson? That besides a person's relationship to his earthly family, there is an eternal family that is more important. So number one, we learned... Jesus' earthly family. Maura na. Mubura kaayo ang pagtulunan ana. Wala kayo na emphasize sa Bible. If you notice, pero kanikaron, the eternal family of Christ. And I want to emphasize on this second and last point. Why? Because many times we do not practice this. You know why there are many misunderstandings in the church, many misunderstandings among Christians, in fighting, when we should be united for the cause of Christ, it's because we do not really understand the eternal family of Christ. In Matthew chapter 12, in our text, verse 49 and 50, the Bible says, He stretched forth His hands toward His disciples and said, Mauni ang akong inahan, mauni ang akong iksoon. 
Maosad ang gisulti sa ginoo nato karon. Kita ang inahan, kita ang igsuon, kita ang uh, uh, brother or sister sa atong ginoo. And verse number 50, Whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. And earthly relationships are temporal, folks. We see how temporal it is. Naghantag mga igsuon diri. May not be our blood brothers or kanang karilat karelasyon nato pero igsuon nato sa simbahan nga nawat yan sakit kaayo sakit kaayo di ba that's right di ba sakit kaayo pero dili na na that's it dili na man mo balik when we all get to heaven our status in heaven will not be the same status that we have here on earth you know, when we get to heaven, my wife, Ruth, will not be my wife anymore. That is why kaning marriage, diri rani sa kalibutan, ninduto na to ni. Kay diri rani. Wala ni sa langit. Ayaw to, kay ang nag-institute aning marriage, ang ginoo ba ya? So atong kuhaon, kung asa ang nindot aning kami yun, ganang gihimo mag sa ginoo? Nindot mag Dilita ng viewpoint sa kalibutan, hindi ko magminyo, eh, pait kayo nang magminyo. Kinsa, ingon, mura ka gaingon, pait kayo, eh, mong design, ginoo, sayop. Mura ka gaingon, anas ginoo, sayop ka ginoo. Hindi, inakom simba, eh, wag ginay ayo yung simba, kaning simbahan, wag ginay ayo. You're just saying to the Lord, Lord, wag kay ayo, Lord. You, you do not know what you are doing. You know why we promote church? Because it is God's design. Do you know why we promote marriage? Because it is God's design. Even government, no matter how hurt we can be, if government becomes corrupt, if government becomes a, a, a wayward, if government becomes dishonest, if government is, does not care, masakitan tang, nga man, kay kani institution manguni sa gino? And that is why we need, the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, we need to pray for those that are in authority. The last time I checked, our president was still Rodrigo Duterte. I know this coming month, karong coming October, na anay mag-file o candidacy and we will know who our presidentials will be for the next election. But they are not yet the president. They, they are running for the office. We need to continue to pray for our president. No president is perfect. I'm not saying that he is perfect. No, wala ay presidenting a perfect. Much like ako. But since God has put that in authority, him in authority, let us continue to pray for them. So, earthly relationships are temporal. But spiritual relationships are eternal. Notice letter A, the spiritual lineage of Christ. Jesus viewed his lineage as being not of this world, but from eternity. Jesus first referred to his eternal family when he was 12 years old. If you remember when he was uh, in the temple, nagipangita siya ni Joseph of Nimeri na saag naguol siya. In Luke chapter 2, verse number 49, Jesus said, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? He was not talking about his stepfather's business as a carpenter. He was talking about his heavenly father's business while he was doing ministry in the temple. That event in Jesus' life, even as a young boy of 12 years old, is now replayed the next 20 years after Diri Aning Atong text. And Jesus' concerned family comes looking for him. And when they find him, what is he doing? His father's business. And doing God's business always Taking precedent, priority over earthly business. So whatever we do here, whether you be in the business world, in the professional world, thank God nga naatay mga doktor, salamat naatay mga nurses, salamat naatay mga teacher, salamat naatay mga architect, salamat naatay mga engineer, salamat nga naatay uh, uh, klasi-klasi nga mga professions, naatay mga medtech, kung sa na inaagi nga, na mga mag-board exam. Karon mag-bar exam na saad. 
Salamat nga attorney ka, but if you are a Christian, our business, our Father's business, should take precedence over our earthly business. Diri, ang sayang kaayo mga kaigsoonan. Nga man, because we get sucked into the worldly mentality. Nga we think, diri ratakotob. But we need to get about our father's business. Use your, your profession. Use your business. Use your education. Use your uh, getting knowledge right now to enrich you and to prepare you for greater ministry. Nga naman na atong service, kutob raman sa kaya, pag abot na to sa professional, wala na. Nga nung mahunong man, nga nung waman tayo professional ministry. Nga naaman ta, pero nga nung waman, dili kayo active. Nga nung mawaman, inigabot sa adult, sa couple, nga na, dagham kog anak, good na Di man na mahunong, baby pa man good, unya, one year old pa man good, unya, two years old pa man good, five years old, ulitawan na mo. Mga kaigsunan, di gina mahunong. If you do not have a mindset of serving the Lord, lisod yud kaayo. I appreciate people who come and, and serve the Lord in spite of their hindrances. Adi, may hindrances ka Challenges. Sorry. Challenges. So, bit-bit pagbata diri, so, bikas bata dito, palihog dawatan ng gospel truck. <laughs> you know, bisag, you have exams, I know, pero, appeal ka mo sa visitation, I salute you. I know it's not all the time. I know there are times when dilig yun na kaya yun. But you know what? Balansiho na to na dili na to kalimtan ang atong obligasyon buluhaton. Because we are not of this world. The spiritual lineage of Christ. He was doing about His Father's business. And secondly, letter B, notice the supremacy of the spiritual family. This incident in what we have read demonstrates that our spiritual family is our primary relationship in the will of God. And no wonder the devil is attacking so much our relationships to each other so that we will be turned off, so that we will not focus on, so we will not do that which we need to do in this spiritual family. And, and, you know, kaning pagbalance anak mga kaigsunan, importante ba yan? Kaya na, kaya ang uban sad, ma-extreme man sad, puro na lang sad ministry, gibiyaan sad ang family. Ang uban sad, puro na sad family, wagi ministry. You have to strike that balance like what Jesus did. Di magkag 30 years ang atong ginong sa Kristo, kuyog yun siya sa iyang pamilya. Of course, they were faithful in the temple, they gave tithes, they offered, they did everything that was Jew, a Jewish family. They were faithful, worshipping the true and the living God. But then when it come, came time that he would, would uh, do ministry, Jesus immediately went into it. And, and all those times was also his preparatory years into the ministry. Mubo ra kayong ministry ni Kristo mga kayo sunan three and a half years pero grabbing impact. Naingon si John, maybe in those three and a half years, it was just ministry, walay blibro nga makakontain sa tanan nga gihimo sa gino. Walay library nga makakontain di ay sa mga libro nga masuwat about what Jesus did in just that short span of time. The supremacy of the spiritual family. There is no greater earthly relationship than a family that is united by their relationship with Christ. That's really what this point is all about. Nindut ning naatay earthly family, but it hurts when our families are not united in Christ. Usa ta kapamilya, pero ang usa, dili, dili ganahan sa gina, naatay unbelieving member of the family. Manang last Sunday we prayed, Lord, save. One of our brothers here, ang imong step father. Oh, paas ni siya glistahan, gi forward niya nako, nagpa-pray sa inyo. Sige, magpray ta. Kay daghan tag mga family members nga dili save, di ba? 
Pero kung kita na atay family members nga save, di ba nindot kayo nag-alagad ta kuyog? Nga naman, wala ta mausa tungod kay igsuon ta, anak ta, papa or family member, nag-usa ta tungod ni Kristo. And there is this spiritual understanding and there's this spiritual uh, a peace that we have that we know that that is why when someone in our family gets promoted, we know one day magkita ragihapunta. Maybe not as what we were, there is a kalibutan, pero kita padayon gihapunta, kuyog sa atong eternal family. Manang importante kaayo ang atong supreme kaayo ang eternal family. When an individual in the family does not share the same desire to do the will of God, the family will be dysfunctional at best. That is why Jesus said, A man's foe shall be thy, they of his own household in Matthew 10, 36. Now, of course, Jesus experienced this in his own family when his stepbrothers did not even believe on him. Kasakit, ana? Nga mismo, uban sa iya mga igsoon, wa mo to'o niya? Any spiritual union doing the will of God will take precedent over any physical union doing earthly business. So, we notice here the spiritual lineage of Christ, the supremacy of the spiritual family. And number three and last, the signifying of the spiritual family. Jesus stretched forth His hand and signified. Now, this motion of the Lord Jesus Christ indicates, listen, that Mary is no better than anyone else who does the will of God. Nindot to ang nahimo ni Mary kay or gipahimo ni Mary kay nagsabak siya. Pero if you are doing the will of God, nindot sa na imo gibuhat, nindot sa na atong gibuhat. Kay mao may gipabuhat sa Ginoo na to. Mary was faithful. Why? Because she did what God wanted him to do, her to do. If we are faithful, we are doing what God wants us to do. Mary is no better than us. Mo nang isud kaayo ang kaning nahitabo karon sa labi na sa atong nasod karon. Where deeply rooted yud ang idolatry. Labi na we call mariolatry. And they say that in Asia, the Philippines is the only Christian nation. In reality, we are not a Christian nation. We are a Catholic nation. There's a difference between Catholicism and Christianity. What is the difference, Pastor? Someone asked me, Are, isn't Catholic, aren't Catholics Christians? I said, in the Bible, the people were called Christians first in Antioch because they saw Christ in them. They lived out Christ. They, they lifted up Christ. They, they shared Christ. That's why they were called Christians. And that is why a person is called a Christian because the center of that person's life is Christ. You cannot call someone a Christian when they worship, venerate Mary. And of course, the eye. I'm not being sarcastic. That's reality. And that, that is my presentation for examination. In the scripture, because it is here in scriptures that it is being said. The question tonight is, are you a member of God's eternal family? Is God our heavenly father? For only one that is born again can truly call upon the heavenly father. In the birth of Christ, we have a glimpse of the miracle of the new birth. Jesus mentioned to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Verses 1 to 7. But by being born again, God joins us in this life. Meaning, mupuyo siya na to. Naa siya kuyog na to. Mabitaw tong gitawag siya. Ang usas siya Emmanuel. God with us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? God, the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 
He lives in us. We are most privileged in our dispensation today. Tungod kay ang ginoo nagpuyo nato sa atong lawas. As God took on human form at the birth of Christ, it put him into a new family, the earthly family of the human race. As your physical birth put you into an earthly family, being born again puts us into God's family. And so tonight, either you are born again or you are not. If you are not, be born again. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. If you are born again, this is my challenge to us. Put premium on your spiritual family. Tagaig premium ang atong spiritual family. When, and, and you can start with our church family. That's why God put us together here. And this is the challenge many times. You know, more beginning challenge. And, and that is why when we start studying, on sao nato pag paghandle Galatians chapter 6, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual restore, kaning kaning aning ang mga practices, mga kaisunan, diri na ni musulod. But ang ugat ana, the root ana, is us thinking and us making God's family superior over our earthly family. Nga naman. Nga naman. Because eternal man eh. Di ba? Eternal man eh. And so tonight, I hope and pray, there's two, there's, there, there's, there's, uh, two things that we learned tonight. The earthly family and the spiritual family. Examine us ourselves tonight. Which are we giving importance to? The temporal or the eternal? Jesus Christ gave the example. Let's follow His example.